So we're going to continue to uh, put some more in until the resi is filled all the way to the very top and it should be pretty much even with the oil that's in the shock body at that point. Put some more in and it's slowly rising into the reservoir. Give it some time. We're going to go ahead and shut the camera off and it, sometimes it can take several minutes for the, the fluid to actually equalize itself. Alright, we've given time for the fluid to equalize here and I'm going to zoom in and you can see that I actually put a little bit too much in this chamber so it's uh, doing a little bit of overflowing through the resi here, but that's okay. Like I said, you're going to get messy doing this. Pull back out here. At this point, we're going to insert one of the pistons into the reservoir. And it's going to be inserted with the point going down. And you can see that it's got a little uh, little ridge on it here. And that's going to be point pointing towards the top. And that's where the spring goes on to the piston. And then once it's inside, we're going to go ahead and put the second piston on, just like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of our shock lube. We're going to oil up the seal so it slides in a little bit easier. We're going to go ahead and slide this in with our finger, just like so. Go ahead and wipe up here. Try to stay somewhat clean while we're doing this. Now we're going to put our spring on. And we're going to push this down a little bit further. And fluid is going to start coming out the top. Here's where it starts to really get messy. But we're going to go ahead and push that pretty much all the way down as far as you can. But that spring is going to pop back up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take our cap and put it in one hand. We're going to go ahead and insert the second piston onto the spring. And we're going to thread the top back onto the reservoir here. And what we're going to want to do before you get started is to make sure that this screw that's in the top is pretty much even with the inside of the cap. Let's go ahead and loosen that screw up. You don't have to take it out, you just want to loosen it up. I'm going to set the cap down over the spring and the second piston and push down on it. And go ahead and start the threads on it by hand. Woo! We're going to try this again. It's hard to get an angle on it here while I'm uh, trying to keep my elbows from getting in the way of the camera. So we're going to tr do this again. Make sure that you don't cross thread it. Take your time. Make sure it goes on properly. When your hands get greasy. It's hard to get a grip on there and tighten that down. I'm going to go ahead at this point and use a, a little wrench not because I want to put torque on it but because my hands are slippery and I it's just going to make it a little bit easier so we're going to go ahead and put the cap on just until it seats we're not going to crank down on it again we just want to put that on just until it seats we're going to tighten it up by hand later once we take it out of the vise now we're going to go ahead and put the shock piston in. Pretty straightforward. And make sure that it's completely filled all the way to the top with shock oil. If it's not, go ahead and top it off and make sure that there's absolutely no air bubbles in there. The system is free of air. Go ahead and grab your shock piston and your shock bottom 
and go ahead and push the shock bottom all the way down to the piston so that it's all the way down and we're just going to very slowly drop this down into the shock body until it rests on there and let's let it just sit there for a minute what we're doing is we're allowing for any air bubbles that may be created in there to come out you can also uh, tap on it a little bit with your finger once you're sure that there's no air in there very slowly go ahead and use your fingers and slowly tighten this up by hand and you should see no air bubbles coming out it should be just fluid leaking out at this point you're going to get to a point here where the seal hits and you can continue with your fingers to tighten it up and you're going to want to watch that seal and make sure that it it's properly seated all the way down into the tube and it's not getting pinched and just tighten that up by hand and we're going to go ahead and let it sit there for a minute at this point we're going to go ahead and remove our mess from our holder I'm going to take the rubber band off and I'm going to use some paper towels and clean this whole whole kit and caboodle up so that we can can handle it properly and uh, we're going to turn the camera off let's clean it up and we'll be right back all right well it took a while but I think we got most of our mess cleaned up here so we've at this point pretty much have the shocks built and what we're going to do at this point is go around and tighten everything up just to make sure that we have good seals and we don't want to let's go ahead and start with the resis and we're going to go ahead and just hand tighten the end and you really don't want to go any more than you can tighten it by hand if you feel that you have to and you can use a little crescent wrench on the the top but don't hold the bottom with anything else and just hold on to it with your hand and only tighten it as you know snug it up just a little bit you don't want to over tighten it at this point we're going to go ahead and tighten the adjustment screw down and we're going to start off at this time just until it touches you can unscrew it screw it back in and then you can feel when it touches the top of the piston let's go ahead and run the jam nut down and we can tighten up the the jam nut so the screw stays in place uh, later on down the line if you feel like you want to tune your shocks you can loosen this up and you can screw this screw in and it's going to give you a little bit more pressure to drive the shock out if you don't feel that there's enough go ahead and play around with that when you have a chance before you put your shocks on and you'll see exactly what it does we're going to use our multi-tool and we're going to hold on to the shock body with the multi-tool and again only with our fingers we're going to go ahead and tighten up the cap here and you don't want to use any more than what you can just do by hand and then we're going to use our crescent wrench and we're going to tighten up this bottom portion here again just as much as you can do it by hand if you again if you feel you have to you can put your multi-tool on there and uh, you know give it a little bit of a snug but you don't want to over tighten anything that's all there is to building them we're going to go ahead and put our boot back on and press on the shock and you can see that it's going to slowly come back out most of the way if not all of the way you can pump on it and you can see how smooth they are and you should not hear any rushing of, of bubbles through the system um, you're going to hear things sliding but you won't hear any rushing of bubbles and that's how you put together the threshold resi shocks pretty straightforward and simple you're going to want to take a look and make sure that nothing's leaking and if it is you're going to want to retrace your steps and find out why thanks for taking your time to watch our tutorial this is team fast eddie and HPIBajaTutorials.com